first of all, from those who doesn't know me, I'm Boris Palovich. I'm working at Merentis, and I'm Rally project technical lead. So I'm leading work on the Rally project. And today we are going to talk about Rally certification and scale with my friend Jesse. I'm Jesse Keating. I'm with Blue Box Cloud, and we are a a uh, heavy user of Rally in, in our day-to-day -day operations. Okay, nice. So, first of all, let's talk about today's agenda. So we are going to talk who, why, and where is using Rally, to show short Rally demo, to explain what we mean by cloud certification, because it's quite different from the work that is done by DevCore. And we'll talk about our current progress and future efforts, and as well we'll have section uh, for questions. And if you have some interesting question and cannot wait, just uh, show me hands and I'll try to uh, answer them instantly. So uh, first of all, uh, this is how I uh, was looking at OpenStack testing before Rally. So it's actually quite simple task, but for some reason it was implemented in quite strange and hard way. So I mean, the using Tempest could help us just to check that functionality works, and actually it didn't check that it actually works under expected loads and uh, 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 that there is no races and such stuff and that you can actually safely use your uh, cloud for uh, production. Yeah. We, uh, we had, when I was at Rackspace, we had an entire team dedicated just to QAing of the clouds before we would, we would call it good. And when I joined Bluebox, we didn't have an entire team. It was just a couple of us, and there was no way we were gonna be able to do that type of thing. So we needed a tool that was much easier, much, much easier to use. Okay, so, uh, did somebody try Rally before? Uh, just few, no, no, okay, more. And did somebody heard about it before? Okay, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Okay, so should I explain what is it? Yeah. Probably. Okay, probably. So uh, there is there are two parts. One is uh, automation of Tempest for tools who won't want to use it or is forced to use it. Uh, by companies, and uh, so it automates installation, uh, automatically configure it properly, and run it, parse all results, and store to DB, and then you can work with results like comparing them, or uh, getting pretty HTML graphs, and so on, what you would like to do. The another part is separated, it's a Rally framework, uh, and it can be used as well for functional testing, but it can be used as well for all kinds of testing that you have negative testing, or stress testing, scale testing, load testing, volume testing, and blah, 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 any word testing. Okay, and after that, all results are stored to DB and you can work with them, for example, to generate reports and Actually, common uh, workflow for Rally is uh, five minutes, uh, so you need to pass credentials of uh, cloud uh, to Rally. After that, you need to specify uh, Rally tasks, so to actually say Rally what tests and what workloads to run. And after test, uh, that, you are just running a single command, and after it finished, you can run another uh, simple command and generate reports that you sh can show to your boss and you'll get happy boss quite fast, and probably promotion. <laughs> so, <clears throat> before, so uh, the whole thing about Rally is simplicity. We would like to do everything as simple as possible. So every step should be clear and fast and simple and without any bugs and things. <laughs> so to get Rally, you can use apt-get in Debian and soon in Ubuntu or Yum in CentOS, you can uh, install it from source per single command like devstack, and there is as well Docker images of all releases and master that is always up to date, and uh, there is even Morana application. So if you know what is Morana, doesn't even know what is Morana. It's yeah. quite popular now. <laughs> okay. 
Red is more popular. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, so, to provide credentials to the Rally, uh, you can use simple way for humans. So, source your OpenRC file and run Rally deployment create from env. This is, and there is a hard, hardcore way. Uh, you have to do this just on to specify what deploy engine to use and its existing cloud. It means that you are just passing credentials and specify uh, admin credentials or list of users that you would like to use for generating load. If you pass only admin, it will create uh, temporary users for generating load. After that, it will uh, delete all of them. But the comment is still simple, so just one line. After that, you can run some sample from Rally repository like boot, bounce, and delete uh, VM. Bounce, it means like uh, suspend, resume, stop, start, and so on. And after that, you can generate a report using just single command, and it will generate the HTML that you can show somebody. Okay, uh, so this is the report. Uh, it is uh, some kind of performance analysis, so it can show you like what it takes to boot server, what it takes to reboot server, unrescue server, delete server. So you need, you know what to optimize in the first, uh, uh, as a first step. So you don't need to optimize random stuff and try to uh, fix your cloud if it is required. So I can just, uh, okay, before running demo, we should, I would like to explain about the format of the task that we have. So. Uh, first line is uh, what uh, workload to use. It's plugin and rally, and it's actually actions that will be done from users. So in this case, we'll boot VM, then delete VM, and uh, booting VM will be with this with these arguments. So we will specify flavor, image, and so on. And runner is another section is uh, how uh, it specify load that we would like to generate. So constant load means uh, that it will have a fixed amount of scenarios running simultaneously, times amount of run. Context is environment uh, that should be created for this workload. Like we should create tenants, users, we can set quotas, roles, uh, anything. Probably upload some images or create some servers. So. And there is the last one section is SLAs, so it's criteria of success. So, for example, this, this one means that there is no failures. If there will be at least one failure, it will say that this task fa test failed. And there can be another, like based on duration or something else that you would like uh, to have. And let me just show the short demo. I mean, to explain that it's really simple. So it was not released really, it was just master. And let me make it bigger. Okay, can you see it? Yeah? Okay, so here is a rally, and I just purge DB, and we'll just run rally deployment. And it say that too few arguments, let's create. And it helps you to understand what you should do here. So there is some kind of tutorial. And we will just source uh, OpenRC file. And because I'm too lazy to write is JSON. And create from env name testing. So after that, we can do rally deployment list. So rally can manage any amount of uh, clouds that you have and uh, they will uh, link the results of tests to some specific cloud, which is useful in future. And after that, you need to just run uh, to start the task. And this is really, okay, yeah. here is really a repo. You got task instead of task. Huh? Right there. Ah, task, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, rally task start, and here is directory, rally samples, uh, tasks, scenarios, and we will just run something like keystone, create and delete uh, user, for example. 
YAML. Are you? So it provides some uh, information and uh, I run it without verbose mode, but okay. So we get some information here like uh, average minimum and maximum duration of keystone create user, keystone delete user, and then we can just do this rally task list. And so all results are uh, stored in rally DB. After that, we can work with them like, for example, rally task report out some HTML. HTML, and now I'll just download it. Some HTML here. Okay. Okay. And let me open it. Some HTML, and so we are getting here overview of all uh, tests that we run, and here we run only single test. And if we click, we will see this. Uh, all pretty graphs that are actually interactive and you can do a bunch of stuff with them. And if there are some errors, it will display them and so on. Yeah, so, okay, I think this is enough for demo. <laughs> so let's move. Where is presentation? It's in the other tab. Yeah, yeah. here. Okay. All right, so. What, what Blue Box is doing in, in our production usage, we use Rally in a few different ways. Uh, the, the primary way that we use it is in our new cloud deployments. Blue Box, every customer gets their own cloud, and we want to make sure that that cloud is operating at the level that we promise it'll operate. So we use Rally when we turn over a cloud to make sure that we've reached the service level that we say we will reach. This doesn't just test OpenStack itself, it's also testing the entire setup of OpenStack, all the underlying hardware, the underlying network, all the things that are outside of the OpenStack codes control, Rally is still able to certify that. And we're running Rally outside of the cloud. We're running as if it was a customer. So we're really getting what the customer experience is when we rally against our cloud. We also use it as a new deployment, or as a, as a validation for new releases of our deployment tool. We want to make sure that as we make changes to how we deploy and upgrade our clouds, we're not introducing regressions in the functionality or the performance of our cloud. So we keep using it as we, as we develop new versions of our releases. And third, we want to make sure when we're evaluating new features of OpenStack or changes to the configuration or new hardware specifications that, that our, our tool or our clouds continue to work as they had before or better. You know, does, the, does the new feature actually do what it says it does? Is the new feature impacting our performance in a negative or a positive way? And that helps us drive decisions in our product offering as to what we want to do. And so this was sort of leading to the, the cloud certification pyramid. So we've got DEFCOR, which is all about can you be an OpenStack cloud? Can you use the logo? But that doesn't really help when, when, in our case, sure, we have a cloud that passes all the basic functionality, but what happens if you've got two users using it, or 10 users using it, or 30 users using it? You know, DEFCOR doesn't really say it's safe to use in a production world. It just says it's possible to use it in the production world. So we want to build on top of that. We want to get an established baseline performance that we can say, this is what our cloud does when we turn it over. But then we also want to know what is our expected load. If we crank that up and really stress our cloud, where does it start to fall over? Because all clouds will fall over at some point. Uh, and then again, at expected scale, if we add more controllers, can we do more things? Uh, and eventually we want to be able to test the high availability. We want to be able to run these tests and take off part of our controller set and see how the cloud operates in that fashion so that we know what to expect and we can communicate with our customers what to expect in those scenarios. And we can validate that going forward that as we make improvements to our processes, it, it is a better thing rather than a worse thing. And H8 thing is expected in library cycle and rally, so you'll be able to run simultaneously multiple scenarios. So one scenario will be destructive, like restarting controllers. Another will be some kind of load, for example, keystone authentication or some basic features like booting VMs, migrating VMs, yeah. and so on. Before that, I mean, you can run Rally in the background and then do other operations yeah. in a different terminal. It's yeah. entirely possible to do that. But it's not automated fully, yeah. and our goal is to automate this fully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
So how else can we make this simpler? You know, one of the, the, the second task that was described in the first slide is have to define what the task is. You know, Blue Box has spent some time to figure out what it is that we want to advertise or we want to test our clouds to do. So we've picked and chosen various bits and pieces of the sample set and created one large file that does all the things that we want it to do. And we've specified what our quotas are, what our SLAs are, et cetera, et cetera. That took a little bit of time that could go away. If, the, if we could publish something as part of Rally that is, this is an acceptable base level of operation, that saves you a step. So it now becomes register the cloud, run the certification, generate the reports, and you're done. So in order to do that, you know, we need to create a certification working group. We need operators like Bluebox and other people who are interested in using Rally to certify their clouds to come to an agreement on some base level type of performance. DEF Core is awesome for a base level of functionality. Now we're talking about performance and operation. So um, how many users, tenants, computers, what type of workloads, those types of things. And, you know, also defining ways to modify those on the fly, making them variable enough that as you point at different size cloud capabilities, you can easily change it without going into the task itself. Yeah, so the task in Ready are parameterized already, so the only thing that we should think is what parameters it should accept. So it's some kind of amount of users, tenants, type of workloads, size of cloud, uh, probably quality of hardware, and so on. And using this information, we'll calculate all performance data that we should expect and what tests run, and so on. Yeah? Yep. OK. So yeah, so the, the other feature steps, along with trying to, to form a certification work group, is also to get more people involved with the Rally project. Rally is now an official OpenStack project. So it's a good way to get your feet wet in OpenStack development. Uh, we need more core reviewers. There's quite a lot of open reviews out there. We need more. 50. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Um, we need more operators that, that understand how their cloud works and have ideas of, of what they want to uh, assure works in their cloud. And that can help develop scenarios and, and test examples. Uh, and we need more companies that are, that are willing to put their name up as we use Rally to, to certify our cloud. So you have free support from me. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to join Rally community and try to use it in your company. So please ping me in any time or write in mail. I'll try to reply. Yep. Yeah. OK. And just about who is using Rally. So there for all time, there is about 30 companies and more than 140 developers and about 1,200 uh, 1, uh, commits and about two years of development. And we see that in Kilo, it's still popular, <laughs> like 25 companies and 80 developers and about 380 commits. And so a lot of different people is working on it. And I will be happy if you will work as well, if you need it. So, okay, this is part about questions. So you have some, does have questions? No. If we have more time, we could also do more demos as well. Yeah, more demo or questions. Okay, question. No. So I, 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 I always uh, try to use the actual user, uh, so I actually can prove. We already implemented it. Huh? So there is already functional mixing, and you have yourself assert something, and it already works. Okay. We would ask for the remainder of the session to please use the microphone or repeat the question for the sake of the recording. Thank okay, you. Okay, the question is there a way to use standard unit test stuff like assertion and so on? And I say that we already implemented it, and there is a way to do self dot assert something equal or something else, and it will work. Uh, so another question. Um, okay. Uh, is there also um, uh, support for having a setup and turndown um, on the test? So it's all about context. So uh, you can specify what context to use, and they are run it one in by one, like setup and teardown. So, but you are specifying this in t on the level of task. 
So creating users, tenants, putting on roles. I can show a sample if you would like. Okay, and one more question. I'm okay, sorry. sure. Uh, how we, uh, is it well integrated with the current OpenStack infra? Uh, um, yes, you know? it's uh, well integrated with uh, infra. Is it easy to integrate just, uh, Okay, let, let's open Cinder, for example. So something here, okay. Oop, not this one, it's Spex. I need Cinder. Okay, this one probably. Okay, here is a rally job that is easy to add to any project and you can open HTML report and this is generated on each patch that you are putting in Cinder, for example. And you have here as well, uh, just a second. Mm, not here. Okay, here is uh, rally logs that you, that you can analyze. Nah, <laughs> it's always infra stuff. Okay. So here are rally logs, and uh, here are logs of all services that we have. So for example, screen, cinder, scheduler, right? Okay, so, thank you. Okay, any um, questions? Yeah. Yes, so uh, okay. how OpenStack specific is, is the testing and how is it is to, to extend it up and down the stack? For example, you wanted to run IPMI checks against the hardware or application level checks against the stuff that is running on so stack. we're doing hard work for the last year about splitting Rally from OpenStack. So keeping it simple to use for OpenStack, but making it simple as well to use anything else. So for now, you can actually write any Python code under load, but uh, you need to have at least fake OpenStack cloud, like just keystone somewhere. So it's because of validation of task, but we are working, I think, in Liberty, we'll finally finish this work, so you'll be able to use Rally as a common tool for anything. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is Alain Navarro from Midokura, and we are testing networking in our company. And I checked Rally so far uh, a few months ago, and I think the networking part is not as elaborate as other areas in Rally. And I wanted to ask you about the roadmap of, uh, for network testing and how does it relate to Project, project uh, Shaker. I think Mirantis is also driving that project that I think has more insight, more, uh, it's getting to the point in network testing. Uh, so this is very hard question, but I'll try to reply. So uh, Shaker was created because Rally team failed to do in time uh, network testing, but we are still working. So I hope someday we'll finish. So we have a bunch of patches, about 10 patches now, that are based for porting any existing benchmark tools that are working on multiply servers or VMs to Rally and extending these reports to support any kind of data that they provide and display it in pretty ways, so we are working on that. Okay. So I'm not sure yet about integration with Shaker, but why not? Probably we'll integrate. But it's the same story. We need to finish this base to integrate even Shaker. Okay. Yeah. So. And another question. Uh, you mentioned to test high availability. You wanted to tear down some services like... Uh, or servers. Um, how, how do you do that? Uh, so, uh, for example, scenario can accept uh, SSH uh, address and uh, user and password, and it will just go to the node and turn off some service, for example. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hi. I would like to find out uh, Keystone V3 support in Rally. So and it's already supported. And uh, Keystone domain uh, support, is that something available in Rally? Keystone what? Keystone domains? domain. Security domains. Security domains. No, I don't think that we support this. But we can support. You have a pretty easy way to ask us to do this. So it's actually called uh, future requests. So you can go here on documentation and uh, so there are plenty of future requests like uh, ability to compare results between 
So just provide a few lines of uh, description why you need this and we'll implement or just publish patches that implement okay. this. Sure, thank you. Okay. Hi, so it seems that uh, this is a really cool tool to when you bring up a, a, a new cloud and you have admin. Uh, how about it works uh, for, for example, in a multi-tenant cloud where you do not have a, a admin capabilities? So the use case is, for example, a, a cloud that you have several tenants and there are certain times in the day that you see performance issues. So I'm seeing how I could use Rally to get you know nice graphs about um, API times, that kind of stuff. How do you scope that at the test level? So you mean to fetch API? All yes, times. that kind of stuff. Not, I mean, not for full duration of operation. Uh, yeah, duration, yeah. So in that case, you don't want to do it as an admin, you want to do it as a regular existing tenant. So I believe that when you specify the deployment, you can specify the users to, act, to use, and then you have non-admin level users that, that, that will do these all operations. Okay, so I assume when you, when you define, if I understand correctly, you define the test either in YAML or JSON, right? Mm -hmm. So do you put that, the set of capabilities that you need to run that test at all, or it so, will just fail if you don't have them? That's a good question. Let's say that you have, for example, a, a test that requires create a tenant, and you're running it by sourcing your OpenRC file, and you do not have that capability. Would that fail miserably, or the YAML file, you know, really checks, you know, that you have that capability? That's so, uh, uh, when you're running a ready deployment check, it will check for now only admin user, but in future it will check that uh, passed users in user section are not uh, admin, so okay. it check roles and so on. All right, okay. Okay, and here is documentation, so here is the section users, so you can specify any users that you already have in system and really will use them to generate load. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. Hey, this is Ian from Time Warner Cable. So I have a question for the, um, for the count, constant type, when you run the test, remember in your YAML configuration file, yeah. you have a um, configuration to configure the constant type, right? Yeah. Is there, my question is, is there any other, other types uh, yeah. right yeah. support? Like, I don't want to start everything at the same time. I want to uh, use like a stepping thread mode. Is there any way to do that? Yeah, so there's, with constant, there's also a, uh, there's a concurrency. So constant basically means I'm going to do all of these tests and then tear everything down. But the concurrency says how many of those tests you're going to do at once. So if you have a, a constant test that you're going to do 100 times and you give it a concurrency of five, it's only going to create, an, if we're doing boot and delete server, it's going to create five servers at a time. Yeah, uh, and if the test is boot and delete, it'll create five servers, delete five servers, create five servers, delete five servers. If it's just boot, then it will create five servers at a time until it reaches 100 and then delete them all. But there are other scenarios besides just constant. Uh, Runners, actually. Yeah, there are. So it's RPC, so it doesn't wait for uh, finish of previous iteration. It just run each interval, new iteration, and actually it's quite easy to implement own runners that does exactly what you want to do, if you would like. They are pluggable, so they are simple to, for implementation, yeah. I mean. Okay. In future, we will make a stress that just rise, load, and so on. Yeah. Okay, but you're still uh, talking about starting everything, like for example, uh, I want to put a server, put server test, right? Mm -hmm. So we put server, five servers at the same time, or can we just put server, one server uh, first, then put two servers second, So do something like that? Uh, no, in current constant runner, it's, uh, it won't do this, but you can implement all that can do this. Okay. Yeah, that would be, it, that, yeah. It's not hard. All right, all right, thanks. Okay. Yeah, is there a runner that lets you, like if you have 10 or 15 scenarios that you want to sort of interleave, and I want to run them in parallel so it can happen kind of in any order, right? So I already talked about this, so it's multi-scenario load generation that will be implemented, I hope, in uh, 
liberty. So <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so we already accept new task format. So we are going to, that allows us to specify any amount of scenarios that can be run in parallel. Okay, cool. So I know it's very important. <laughs> it will be implemented. Okay, any other questions? No? All right. Okay, thank, thank you, you for coming.